Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the third and final episode of a mini series where I teach you how to build a simple yet very powerful text editor called PyText using Python and TKinter. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of the series yet, I definitely recommend you check them out because we have written quite a bit of code, discussed a lot of topics and our text editor is starting to get really powerful. In the first two lectures we have implemented already basically the most important functionalities that every editor should have and I'm talking about the ability of creating and opening new files, we can save files after updating them or even just creating as many as we want with the save as functionality. In this video you're going to learn how to build a reactive status bar for our text editor which we're going to place here at the bottom side of the window. We're going to implement several different keyboard shortcuts to access all the different functionalities of the editor in an easy way. And we're also going to learn how to implement text pop-ups in order to actually provide information about the editor. So we've got a lot of code to write, let's get started. We have already mentioned in the previous lectures that our text editor is going to be divided basically in three main classes, the menu bar class, the PyText class and a status bar class. We've said that using object oriented programming for such a development case, it's definitely a winning choice because it allows us to keep our code base much cleaner than it would otherwise be and it also enables a better separation of concerns between the different parts of the program. So let's start to write our status bar class, class status bar, let's define the init method which is going to accept clearly self and for now let's use the pass instruction because we want to do the same thing that we did for the menu bar with the status bar class. Basically we want to instantiate it within the init method of the PyText class that we're basically using as a controller for the whole program. So here I'm just going to type self.statusBar equals status bar and I'm going to pass self, meaning the instance of PyText. So going back to the init method of status bar, I can now add parent, which allows us to access all the different properties and methods of the PyText class from within our own status bar class. So we've said that our status bar is going to be responsive. And with responsive, I mean that it's going to know when a file has been saved. And right after the save event occurs, a string with the sentence your file has been saved is going to show up within the status bar. And this is going to be really helpful from a user experience standpoint. Always remember to develop keeping a thought about the user that will have to actually use the program that you're writing. Whether it's a graphical user interface program like this text editor or maybe a website or even just a command line interface program. It's always very important to keep the end user always in your mind. And so in order to do so, in order to actually have the ability to update the content of our status bar, we need a specific widget which allows us to update the content of itself. And so in this case, we can define a variable self.status that we can instantiate using tk.stringvar. So string var, as the name suggests, is basically a widget that allows us to create a string variable. And we can actually set the value associated with this string variable using its set method. And we can therefore use the set method right away to actually define a default status for our program. So self.status.set and here I'm just going to pass a string. So pi text 0.1 the version and then the name that I given in this case I've called it Gutenberg. Okay so we've created a widget that basically allows us to update itself but we now need another widget to actually build the status bar in order to show the text that is contained let's say or associated to self.status and here we can easily use the label widget so label equals tk.label 
And first of all, I'm going to pass parent.text area because this time we want our status bar to be actually, let's say, part of the text area, okay? So that it can be shown here in the bottom of the page. And we can now pass all sorts of parameters to actually personalize the status bar according to our own preferences. But first of all, we need to pass a very important parameter, which is text variable. That basically allows us to connect our label widget with the string var widget we've defined previously. So text variable equals self dot status. We can now define a foreground, basically the font color. Okay, we can set it to black and we can now define the background color for our status bar, basically the color of the status bar itself. So BG equals, in this case, we might use, for example, light gray. We now must define a position for our text. So basically, in case the string associated with self.status is shorter than the label itself, we need then to specify a position for this text. So we can define anchor. And to anchor, we can pass different values that are associated with the cardinal coordinates. So north, south, east, west, or southwest, or southeast, and so on. So in this case, we want on the bottom side, left, so south, west. Therefore, I'm going to pass SW. And then we can actually specify some font specifications, as we did for the other classes. So I'm going to copy font specs tuple because I want to personalize it here as well. So for example, Ubuntu 12. And now therefore font equals font specifications. We can now use pack to position our status bar at the bottom of the page reference to the text area basically. So label dot pack with side equals tk dot bottom and with fill equals tk dot both so that it can take all the space that it needs horizontally. Okay, perfect. So let's now launch our script and here it is, our fantastic status bar. Awesome. Before starting to write a method within the status bar class, which will in fact allow us to update the status, Let's first see how to implement a shortcuts system, basically a system that will allow us to use some keyboard shortcuts to trigger different functionalities of our editor. This is something that is pretty common to every text editor. For example, here in Visual Studio Code, if I click on file, you see that, for example, to create a new file, I can click on the new file button. But as you see, I can also use the Ctrl plus N keyboard combination. And so in order to do that, we need two things. First of all, we're going to need to create a new method within the PyText class, which we're going to use to actually create the connections between the keyboard shortcuts and the functions that we want to call. And we also need to specify another parameter here, basically for every command that we've added to the file dropdown menu. And this parameter is called accelerator. And to accelerator, we basically pass the combination of keys that we intend to use. So to actually create a new file, we might want to use control plus N, which is a pretty standard combination. And actually there is only one L like so. Then we can define control plus O to open a new file. Then control plus S to save a new file and then control plus shift plus S to call the save as method. So these different strings that we've passed to the accelerator parameter are just to inform the user that we've specified different keyboard shortcuts to use. But as we said, we need to actually define a method within the PyText class to create the connection between the keyboard shortcuts and the functions that we want to call. And so we can just call this method def bind 
shortcuts which is going to accept self as parameter and here we can actually start to make the different connections the different bindings so we're going to do this way self dot text area dot bind and here first of all we pass the keyboard combination that we want to use so for example control dash n to call self dot new file this is just the standard way the tk inter way to uh, define the control key and notice how here i am using the lowercase version of n because in fact that's the one that is going to be used most of the times so then i need to define three more bindings one two and three so control o is going to call open file control s is going to call save and control capital s is going to call save as and that's because control plus shift plus lowercase s gives us capital s now that we've defined the method bind shortcuts we actually need to call it from within the init method so that it's run as soon as the program starts so here it's going to be self dot bind shortcuts and we can now save the file and run our scripts so first of all i'm going to use the control o combination and you see we actually get an error how could that be it says type error open file takes one positional argument but two were given let's try to solve the mystery so what is happening is pretty easy to understand it's happening that basically the bind method that we are using to bind the different shortcuts passes a parameter in the form of a key press event to the method so basically every time that we're triggering a keyboard combination that we bind to a function the bind method is sending to the function that we're triggering also a key press event basically another parameter and because currently our different methods are not equipped to manage other parameters we're only passing self we get this error in this case open file takes one positional argument self but two were given because bind is also sending the key press event so to let our methods manage this specific parameter or any other parameter for that matter we can pass args so asterisk plus args is a convention that we use to tell our functions our methods that there might be a variable number of parameters coming their way and therefore even though we are not going to use them most of the time the function is able to actually manage them so i'm going to pass args to all the different methods of our class like so and now we can save the file run the script once again i'm going to use the control o combination and there it is our file explorer perfect so let's now for example open first document let's add something new or maybe let's just remove something new and then let's add it back like so i'm not going to use the control s combination to save the file then the control n combination to create a new file control o to open the file once again and it is saved with its content updated okay so we are finally ready to make our status bar responsive and that's because basically we are now going to bind all the possible keys of our keyboard to a method that we're going to define within the status bar class and we're also going to call the same method from within the save and save as methods so that every time the method that we're going to define is going to be called from save or save as we are then going to update the status bar with the string your file has been saved and as soon as another generic key is pressed we are going to call the same method that we're now going to define which is then going to update the status passing a generic pytext01 gutenberg 
Don't worry if you're a little bit confused now, I guarantee you that everything is going to be as clear as crystal. We can call this method simply update status, so def update status, which is going to accept self, and as a matter of fact, because we're using the bind method to call it as well, we also need to pass args. So let's now use the pass instruction, and let's think a little bit. So we've said that we're going to call the update status method from within the save method, the save as method, and actually at the pressing of every other key of the keyboard. And we also know that the bind method actually sends a key pressed event to whichever method or function we are associating to it. So we can use this at our advantage to actually know what is that called the method from within the method itself. So, from within the save and save as methods, we're going to pass a boolean value, we're going to pass true to update status, so that our update status function will know that if the parameter that is passed, so basically the first parameter of args is a boolean, if it's true, then it really has to update the status, passing your file as being saved. But if the parameter is not a boolean, which would mean that the method is being called by a key pressed event, then in that case, we can just set back the status to pytext01 Gutenberg. So if is instance args zero, so the first parameter, in case that is a boolean, we use is instance basically to make a type check to a parameter passed. In that case, we can set the status bar. So self.status.set your file has been saved. Otherwise, else we're going to set the status, as we've said, to pytext01 Gutenberg. So we now need to call update status from within save, so after the file has been saved, self.statusbar.update status, we're going to pass true, so we're using self.statusbar, okay, basically this instantiation that allows us clearly to access the methods of the class, so update status. And the same thing we want to do from within the save as method, so here, serve.statusbar.update status. And now we can actually make a generic binding. So self.textarea.bind, we can make a generic just by using key, like so. We're then going to call self.statusbar.update status. So everything's ready, let's give this a try. I'm going to run the script once again. Let's open up a file, open file, first document. Let's modify the script. I'm just going to add just a white space and then control S. And you see, your file has been saved. Everything works as expected. We can now just press another keyword, like for example, just let's remove the white space. And there you go. The status gets updated once again with Pytext01 Gutenberg. Awesome. And as a matter of fact, every time I press the Ctrl S combination, you see, or just go ahead and click on save, the status gets updated. And the same thing happens if we use the save as method. So third document, save, your file has been saved. Perfect. Our program is basically completed. The last thing that we need to add is the about drop down menu, like help, for example, here in Visual Studio Code which will allow us to get some about pop-ups with information about the program itself. And so in order to do so, we need to make another import. So here, from tkinter, import message box. We're going to use message box to actually generate those message boxes, which are going to show the different information that we want them to show. But before doing that, we can actually create the about menu. So about drop down equals 
and we can basically use the same specifications, same code we've used for file dropdown, like so. And then right here below, now that we've created the submenu, we can actually show it. So here it's going to be called about and it's going to be associated with about dropdown. So now let's add a couple of commands about dropdown dot add command label equals release notes. Then we can use the separator about dropdown dot add separator and then another command here, which is going to be about. We now need to define the two methods that we want to call using these commands. So here, def show about message, which is going to accept self. And here we can use a message box method called show info to actually show the message. And so in order to do so, we're going to need two things, a box title, in this case, about by text and then a box message a simple python text editor and now we can use message box dot show info and to show info we pass box title and box message and same thing we can do for the release notes so show release notes so this is going to be release notes and here version 0.1 Gutenberg we can now actually call the two methods so command equals self dot show release notes and then show about message. Let's now run our script one last time. Let's open up the source code of our editor like so. And we can now go ahead and click about release notes version 0.1 Gutenberg and then about 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 by text a simple python text editor awesome okay so that was it for this video and for this mini series on how to create a text editor with python and tk inter thank you so much for watching and for reaching the end of the video i really hope you enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel because there is a lot of new content that i'm going to publish every single week see you in the next video and as always stay awesome and happy coding